After a drawn-out period of inactivity, our sun appears in recent months to have been jolted from its deep slumber, blasting tons of plasma into the solar system. The flares emanate from sunspots with enormous magnetic filaments rising from the sun's surface. This is just the most recent activity of the star that makes life on Earth possible. Four and a half billion years old, the sun emits the light and warmth necessary for human life through a process similar to nuclear fusion. What looks to the human eye like a glowing, peaceful golden disk is in fact a phenomenon in constant change. The sun is not just a, a, a boring yellow ball in the sky which uh, doesn't change. Of course, it changes over periods of 10 or 12 years from being relatively benign to being quite active. Since the 17th century, scientists have been actively charting the appearance of sunspots on the surface of the sun. These spots, now known to be solar flares, have been responsible for major changes in the Earth's temperature in the past. Today we don't completely understand how solar mechanisms can disrupt our climate, which is why we have to study them and understand how this star works. That's the purpose of SOHO, a joint ESA and NASA observatory launched in 1995. In orbit more than 1,800,000 kilometers from Earth, SOHO's position means its 12 instruments can observe the Sun without the interruption of the Moon and the Earth passing in front of them. The temperature of the Sun is 15 million degrees centigrade at its center and 5,500 degrees centigrade at the surface. This creates constant movement and magnetic activity. Some of this shows up as sunspots. On the sun, we can see dark patches, which are in fact concentrations of solar magnetic fields. These concentrations happen on the sun's surface and accelerate the particles that we call solar wind. All of a sudden we have gusts of solar wind arriving on Earth and disrupting our own electromagnetic systems. Travelling at 470 kilometers per second, solar wind can have very serious consequences. To help better understand this phenomenon, ESA launched the cluster mission 10 years ago. Comprising four satellites flying in close formation around our planet, Cluster studies the interaction of the solar wind with the magnetosphere, a sort of protective belt surrounding our planet. This has introduced a valuable new method of predicting space weather. Storms generated by solar outbursts can seriously hamper even knock out electrical systems aboard satellites and damage power grids on Earth. Cluster has provided a continuous solar weather watch that combined with SOHO's data now allows contingency measures to be taken. But the power behind these solar outbursts is still a mystery. The thing we don't understand about the sun is how the dynamo which produces the solar magnetic field really functions. The sun is like a sort of magnet with a north pole and a south pole. It would be very interesting in order to understand the magnetic field emission mechanism to observe the sun from above. Solar Orbiter will do just this. It's the next ESA mission to work on the sun before the end of the decade. For the first time, optical instruments will be positioned in an orbit that will allow scientists to view the axis of the sun's north and south poles. Scientists are fascinated by the sun, not only because of its physical influence on our planet, but also because of the answers it could give us to questions which become increasingly vital as our population and our energy needs grow. If we can reproduce the sun's thermonuclear reactions on Earth, which is basically the result of fusing hydrogen and helium atoms, the techniques we're developing give us a good chance of having an inexhaustible energy source in the centuries to come. Space observation has enormously changed our understanding of the sun and its mechanisms. Thanks in particular to ESA satellites like SOHO Cluster and the next mission, Solar Orbiter, we will surely have new answers to the questions that remain about this mysterious star.